with some radio in the background about video games, I'm going to go through a dual use thing, and that is how to show you how to slide, add vectors by sliding, but also show you how to go about uh, setting up and bringing in um, a, a picture and then into a file and then also setting up some things called components or blocks in SketchUp. So remember, the picture of adding vectors was not to scale, and so as I move this thing around, I don't really want to do too much of that. So I am going to right away, and not to worry so much, I'm going to do File, I'm going to Import, I'm going to Import an image, and I'm going to import the vector add image, and I'm going to bring it in at some arbitrary size here, which I just did. And realistically, then I'm going to then, even though I don't need to, I'm going to go ahead and double click inside of that. And I'm going to go ahead and use what is called the tape measure tool. I'm going to go with my shortest vector. I'm going to say from there to there, I'm going to make that 10 millimeters and hit it return here, resize the model, yes, and now I'm guessing that these are going to be to some general scale. That said, now I'm going to go to camera, standard views, top, and I've got here this concept of adding vectors. Now, adding vectors, we're going to realize that what we really want to do is find a point of intersection and then slide the vector so their tails emanate from that point of intersection and then add the vectors tip to tail and then do it again. That said, we really when you're adding vectors you are adding a repeating shape that's of a given distance. So I'm going to right now go ahead and just make a repeating shape that in fact is I'm going to take this along that distance I'm going to make it one millimeter long one millimeter and there it is and I'm gonna put in the front of this just so I can kinda of get used to the fact of it I am going to actually go ahead and put some sort of arrow here three sides and I'm gonna put something in the front here which is not in fact right so I'm gonna instead click on here I'm gonna put just the weirdest little frontage thing on here from there go back to this again I'm gonna go from the end there and I'm going to kind of get something that looks a little bit odd as I'm trying to zoom in here and I'm going to take it back to there and I've got something that essentially is going to be akin to an arrow and now I'm going to go ahead right click edit make a component and right away I'm going to set my component axes to the end of that line which is there there in there and I'm going to call that <clears throat> unit arrow okay so what you're gonna see and I'm gonna create it and there it is that's my unit arrow so now as I go through on top of this now I'm gonna zoom out here I'm gonna go ahead and bring in that component arrow and do something with rotation and scale on it which you'll see this one I will make I'm zooming out here and then back in I'm gonna make that arrow my round open arrow for now so what I'm gonna do I'm going to window component in model and I'm gonna bring in that unit arrow I'm gonna bring it to there and I'm losing my mouse zooming in here so I'm gonna put it pretty close to the edge of this zoom it up here now I'm gonna go ahead click it move it take that out and you know I've got my, got my unit arrow relatively good now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate that unit arrow I, by grabbing selecting click rotating around to what I want it to be and then finally I can do the same thing by scaling so I'm going to grab that and then hit S for scale you're going to see this here and look that and take it up to right around there and we'll call that relatively good it's not perfect that's one of my things and I can now this again was my open arrow I can do the same thing or else I can just learn to copy this so I can grab that grab from the end there to where I want to go to there same thing once again now I'm going to rotate it from that point there to there take it to where it needs to be again these are not snappable and then I can S for scale and I can take this thing and I'm scaling on the middle of it. All right, I'm going to scale that up. 
you're going to see there are other ways, and I've kind of got that laid out. And you're going to see within SketchUp the reason why you do that is because these things stick together when they're components. And as, actually, when we start talking, what I did when I moved that, I did not use a control copy. So I'm going to go back here, zooming back in. I am going to grab, hit the control for copy, grab that at, once again from its insertion point. I've copied it to there, right? And now I can click and go to the end point there, if you would, someplace in here, and get pretty close on top of this for its position. Now, again, S for scale. You grab the middle one, and that's why when I did that, I probably screwed up a little bit with my setup on it. So I've got two of them somewhat laid out, zooming in and out. Double click here, takes you all the way through. I've got one there, and I've got one there. And in the end, those my third one will do it again. It's clicked, select, control, takes me from there to there. I'm going to go out to the edge here. Those Exact coordinates are not snappable, but the, but the elevation is snappable. Once I grab the thing, grab, select, edge within here, and I'm going to take it basically to some point there. These, again, are not perfect. Once again, S for scale. And now I'm doing this at this point in time just to kind of set up vectors that we can eventually then look at in terms of transformation. So I've got three things and now as before I take a break here I'm going to go I've got one, two, three arrows but I want them on the right layer so I need to go now to window layers plus and we're going to go open head arrows or vectors. Okay and I'm going to make that my level and I'm going to take now or my layer I'm going to take one, control, select, control, select, and then right click on top of one, entity info. We're going to change all of those to open head arrows. So those are on the open head arrows. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for now. Just going ahead and select, grab from the end here, grab that to there. Once again, the rotation is you grab select the endpoint, select your base. And I'm not being so perfect here. I've got one. Once again, you grab here, S, you're going to grab the middle one, pull it back out. Not perfect as you go through here. But this arrow, we would like to have plus on closed head vectors. Click on that. Now this one is going to be on what layer? Window, Entity Info, that should be on closed head vectors. And so as we clean these things out, that's one. We've got the other one as well. Now, once again, holding the Control key does a copy. And then holding the Shift key holds a face. But you select, grab your tool, grab what you want to do each time. And then S for scale, R for rotate, and you're typically grabbing the middle one, pulling it down relatively close. Because you copied it, it will be on the right layer. You can grab the beginning of the end, but typically you're going to grab your vectors from the end and go towards the middle. You could do this by all kinds of different things. Once again, that case, edit, undo, move. What did I not do correct? I did not use the control key for copy. So. <clears throat> Going back to the analogy of grabbing the kid by the ear, select, tool, control, end, takes you from one spot to the other. And then you've still pre-selected that. You go from here to some point there. We'll do a better job on the arrow next time. Take that through, S for scale. And you can scale this thing somewhat up to where it needs to be. Now, let's check what's up with our layering now. And our coloring, somehow did we lose that vector? We lost that one. We didn't lose this one. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure now that that is on another layer, which is going to be called the image. So the image should be on a layer. So that image here should be on a layer called image, which means now I can make my open vectors a layer, turn these off, 
and I've got my open vectors, which I've lost one, and I have my closed head vectors, right, as I go back and forth. So we're going to want to make sure that we can kind of, right, close head vectors, turn off that layer. So we've got three closed head vectors, and we've lost one of our open head vectors. So I'm going to click this back on, turn that back on, and see what we've lost. So <clears throat> we're setting this up then so you can do a bunch of different programs. You can see the setup on this. Could have been just as done by rasterization, in other words, taking raster to vector. And so the one that I've got to do is I've got to copy this one again. Remember, I've got to hit control here, hit the control button, go to the endpoint there. Now, having done this, you could have done it, and then you're gonna you could have done it in PowerPoint, and I've done a couple of those out in the past as well. I'll hook you into those, but realizing that sliding these vectors is worthwhile to do mostly by hand because by the time you get into this stuff in the CAD you're as much time spent in setting up the CAD as anything else. When we start talking about dynamic bits however it's going to be important so we've got an open vector, an open vector, and an open vector and those all should be right click entity info on what layer open headed vector <coughs> Okay, and then we've got a closed, hit control, hit control, right click on top of one of them, entity info, these should all be closed headed vectors, which it looks like they are. Now let's see whether everything's hunky dory. If I click that off, if I cl click off the closed vectors, I've got three, and I have to change the current vector. I click off the open vectors and I've got three. And in reality, later on, you can start playing around with layers and colors and everything else. So that sense of laying these things out. <clears throat> and then finally, when we look at it, you will see that each of these are actually going to have an insertion point that's equal to where the back was or the tail, which makes sense. And then a scale, which is equal to some number, which defines how long it is, and also a a, an array which shows that, that it's pointing in the right direction. So this should be showing vector here, should be showing something like, remember cosine minus sine sine cosine, it should be somewhere in the order of the cosine being 0.86 6 or 806, whatever the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, and then the sine should be around a half as we go through. We'll be sliding these back and forth. If you see in a second, before I finish off here, I'm going to save this. I've got, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the image and turn off the open vectors. I'm sorry, turn off the open vectors and I'm left with this. And so as we start sliding our vectors, you're going to start to do things like setting up. Let's say I'm going to pick these two vectors here. You're going to set up what would be construction lines, typically by going to there and then going out to there and it's going to set up that line right there and that's a construction line and you're going to take this one here you're going to set up a construction line by going to the end and then to the front to that and you've got the second construction line and then you can start sliding vectors etc so we'll leave it at that <clears throat> realizing that we've set up a lot here and eventually we'll show look, look what the code looks like to move these things and add them together Remember that we have to slide our vectors so their tails are hanging off the point of concurrency. Add them, them tip to tail, draw the new vector, and then start again. So we'll start that in the next video. Thanks for listening. I'll also do this by hand on video because it is a lot faster if you just learn enough to slap some more paper on the page. Thanks for listening.